I've always been one of those people that will try different things. It doesn't matter how big the task seems or how out of my grasp I think it is. I'm gonna give it a go. And if I fail, I fail. This is one of those examples. So I've taken an Ibanez guitar that I've had for a long time. Uh, the truss rod in the neck is just completely gone. So for me, it's an ornament anyway. I figured I'm just gonna give it a go. I'm gonna try inlaying this guitar. In no way am I a professional woodworker and in no way is this an instructional video. This is just what I did and the results that I achieved from there. It's not a stellar professional job and I certainly would not allow anyone to do what I've done to this guitar on that guitar. So with that in mind, just enjoy this video as a little bit of a, is he gonna balls it up? First thing I did was create some templates in Photoshop. I designed the pieces I wanted, I cut them out on paper and saw how they would look on the neck. The next job was to take out the frets using this, a fret nipper. What I would do is take the guitar outside and I would literally rip them out from the sides. It's a surprisingly laborious task and it's something that if you're a guitar tech or you're into doing up guitars, setting up guitars, that you've probably done many times before. This was my first experience doing this. And honestly, I didn't enjoy it much. It's, it's kind of scary to just tear out a fundamental part of this instrument, even though it's not really playable. Here you can see the tear out from where I pulled the tangs out. I'm sure if you're good at what you're doing, this won't happen anywhere near as badly here. So now it's operation cleanup. Work like this, it's very therapeutic and actually I do quite enjoy doing this. Now you can see that the tear out doesn't look as bad and most of the gouges will be covered by the frets. Back to the templates. And here I'm cutting out the second set which will be used to score onto the mother of pearl blocks. The mother of pearl blanks I've used are off of Amazon. You can pick them up for about six, seven quid. Uh, they definitely come from China, but they're green abalone and they are absolutely gorgeous. The only problem I have is that some of them have come with weak spots. So you do have to avoid those if possible. Using masking tape, I can anchor the template to the abalone. Masking tape is the perfect material because it's not too sticky like sellotape and gonna risk damaging the pearl. And it's transparent as well, so I can see what I'm doing very clearly. Having peeled off the masking tape, I have become plainly aware that I can't see the scoring I've made. So there was a simple solution to this. Uh, just rub it down with a pencil and voila, you can see everything clearly. Now the next step is to take the jeweler saw, which I also bought off of Amazon, and cut out a rough shape of the inlay. This is actually quite a long task to do. You'd be surprised at how little movement you get out of the saw. Maybe it's just my blade, but with a little bit of willpower and a lot of protest the hero, I got through it. Now I'm going to take a rasp to the inlay and file it to shape. Finding a centerline is absolutely crucial when doing work like this. So I've measured it a few times and made sure I've done it properly using a braddle to poke in my positions, draw a centerline, and then I can place my templates properly. Back to the Stanley knife, and I'm now cutting into the wood, which is a little bit terrifying. But don't worry, I'm using the same template, so I should get the same results. With a very sharp chisel, I'm now doing the cut to cut technique, which is using the lines I've scored with the Stanley knife and cutting into them with the chisel so I won't take out any material that I don't want to.
With the gouges complete, I can now use this inlay powder to surround the inlays and make a really, really tight finish. I've glued the inlays in and the excess glue is now being mixed with the powder. With the glue dry, I can sand off all the excess. The nut is in the way, annoyingly, it seems that the previous owner has super glued the thing in. I can't remove it for love nor money, so I'm just gonna have to bash it until it's flat. The procedure for the rest of the inlays was fairly similar. The only main difference being that there were dot inlays already in the neck, which I had to get rid of. How would I do that? Grind them to powder with a Dremel, obviously. After repeating the process for a couple of weeks and bashing some frets in with a hammer, the thing's looking pretty good. Now all I need to do is pop some strings on it and find a home for it on the wall. The main reason I've done this is to prove to myself that just because I can't do something, necessarily mean that I shouldn't. And I hope that that would be your takeaway from this little project as well. Go and do something that you don't know how to do. Because you're going to get a massive sense of achievement when you finally get there and you have done it, and you're going to have learned a new skill, and that's completely invaluable. Skills are the things that become hobbies, and hobbies are the thing that ultimately can become careers. So, go and try something new. I urge you, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.